can't say enough about um, how much respect that I have for, for Jack, for Reverend Danforth, for Senator Danforth, for all the roles and titles he has. He's Jack, you know, and I just love what a good, good, good man he is. And I think anyone who's been fortunate enough to be the recipient of Jack's mind and heart is really lucky. I consider myself lucky. Some of the words that I've been thinking about it, uh, words that would describe Jack, certainly one of them is, uh, is loyalty. You know, Jack is the kind of guy that if he's, if, if he's with you, he's with you all the way. Just fiercely, fiercely loyal. I have so much, so much respect for, for him there. He does not abandon people in any circumstances. He just is authentic is the word that I was looking for. You know, he is consistently him. He lives and models his values. You always know who's going to show up when Jack shows up. There's no, there's no variance on character or quality. Um, just really, truly authentic, which I think is super important because in a world where, where you know, inclusion is such an important thing, you want to make sure that people get to be themselves. And by being an authentic being, by being an authentic presence, I think he makes a lot of space for others to do that, to just be you. He's not, like, that's what really um, is one of the hallmarks of having an inclusive environment. In fact, it's for people to be able to come in and be themselves and not have to look out, how do I have to look, act, dress, think to fit in here, you know, just, Jack, just amazingly uh, loyal and and generous, um, and and generous. Like, of course, you know you expect people, you know, who have financial means to want to be able to to sh share that. But Jack's generosity goes beyond that. It is generous of heart and mind and and service and and um, he just really is that man who's just a has a spirit of giving, and then many of us have been the beneficiaries of his very generous spirit. Civility is one of the things that Jack has called for most often. It is the way that he shows up, it is what he asks of people. Um, never have I heard Jack ask or think that it's right for us to all think alike. That's never, never a value that I think is a useful one, like we're not going for a single mindset. But we are going for a society in which we are able to listen to each other and to, and to, and to be able to give people space to, to show their differences and their ideas. And then to, to once you really hear each other, maybe you can find that place of common, common, uh, common you know, understanding. Like, I truly think that uh, there is always something to connect to with every, anybody. And I know that's what I like about Jack. Gosh, so many ways that I, that I want to talk about unity and bridge building. So first of all, my relationship with Jack is, on, is in two dimensions. One, I worked for him and with him in civic space when he was head of St. Louis 2004 and I was working there around the whole notion of, of diversity and inclusion, around bringing people together, around creating a unified vision for what the region most wanted, like setting priorities. Like one of the things I loved about his mind was you, you cast a very wide net and you engage as many people as you can to get their thoughts and opinions. And then as a leader, you actually have to make some decisions based on you know, what people ask for, what people say they want, and what you actually think you can manage and what resources that you have. So the ability to, to synthesize large amounts of information from lots and lots of sources and a diverse group of minds is really one of the things that I really admire about him. The other space, however, that, that I really uh, know Jack in is as a faith leader. Um, so we belong to the same denomination and, and I have been so touched and moved by, you know, he's, he's you know, both you know, a politician, lawyer person. He's also an ordained Episcopal priest, and that is my tradition. And being around seeing his role as both elder statesman in both those dimensions and ability to, to like get people from different um, mindsets to be able to listen to each other and think about each other and again, you know, bring people to some unified decisions. When I was, when I was working for the organization, I was asked to come on to uh, the local PBS station and do, do a meeting, do a talk, uh, interview on race relations in the region. 
And so, sure, that's what I talk about. That's what I do, right? And so I got invited. The person who was hosting the show was someone whose work I knew, didn't really think about twice, like, you know, going to be on his show, great guy. And, and our media people knew that, you know, him and knew our relationship, but did, did no due diligence about investigating what the show was about. So I show up and it's me and there's a woman who's a professor at one of the universities. And then there are, are two men from a very, very extremist, um, racist um, part of our community who have um, sort of the modern day equivalent of the, of the Ku Klux Klan who were on this panel on this show with me. And I was in shock. I did like did not expect to walk into a hostile, racist conversation about things. And so I really pride myself on being very calm and very zen and able to handle all kind of situations. And I didn't do a good job that day. I they 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 just were mean and vicious and and not bound by truth. Like I can argue with you about something, we just have different perspectives, but you just can't tell a lie. That's just not okay with me. So they weren't bound by truth and I sort of lost my, my zen-ness, my, my composure. So, you know, they got the tape, I called my boss, I said, this just happened. She said, get the tape, you know, she looked at it, she sent it to Jack and, um, and uh, then I got a call from Jack's secretary saying, Jack wants to see you. And so, you know, okay, I'm fired, I'm done, you know, kind of thing. I get there and I walk in and he just says, thank you. Like not the answer I was, not the comment, he said, thank you. One of, the, one of the things that these men were saying were hateful things about him and about his leadership and the liberal, you know, couched as conservative and they were just mean and nasty and wrong. And, you know, so he's my boss, not just my boss that I work for, but he's actually someone I respect. So my part of the process was like defending his name and his integrity. He was like, I can't believe you did that. You know, I can't believe that you, like I'm a you know working class you know black man defending an owning class white man on TV, you know it's just going, I'm going to pay for that right? And he was like, thank you for that. Like you know all we have, Jack, you know you know is, is our names and our reputations, and I'm not going to let yours be sullied anyway. I'm going to let mine be. So that was a really important moment for us. You ever heard how Jack uses the word big? You're like, I want it big. That was one of the things I loved about working with him. You'd go into Jack's office with an idea, and he's saying, okay, but make it big. And so I think, you know, thinking for unimaginably big things is a way to, you know, reasonable, yeah, I can figure it out, that's, that's too small. Like, that's one of the inspirational pieces I got from working for Jack. Like, never ever settle for small. Like, hold big thoughts and big ideas. Go, go for that. You know, being a, being a you know, person who cares about these things um, and the Civil Rights Act being so, not just meaningful then, but, and, you know, but Jeopardy now, like the, the fact that, you know, it, it does require and does take someone to lend their, lend their, their reputation to make this, this, uh, this moment happen. He cares about others and he cares about causes and he cares about the end result, but to celebrate Jack Danforth is not something that he would ask for. So I'm like delighted that he's doing it and, I'm, and I really think it's, it's, it's really, like I want to say thanks, I really want to say Jack, thanks for doing it um, as much as congratulations for getting it. You've earned it. Everybody knows how wonderful, you know, what your lifetime of service is in so many fields. But I think just that the fact that you're willing to sit back now and take it in and let people appreciate you and let people say to you, thank you Jack Danforth for being you and for all you've done is a really big deal. So I just want to say Jack, thanks for leaning in and accepting this moment. And I know it's uncomfortable for, for, for you to be this centered, but it's, it's, it's the right thing to do and I'm happy that it's happening.